Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. Yes, sir. Oh, let's, let's let Jimmy do what he do. Welcome to the Porter Way Podcast. I'm hype. Listen. Uh, we did something special yesterday, in my personal opinion. I like to say that I did something special for my, I'm selfishly right, for myself, right. but also for you, with you, together. Tarvis Take, make sure y'all check that out on YouTube. We did a, I did a master interview with Antonio Tarver, the, the magic man right here. It's on the Patreon. You should have been seeing the announcements. If you missed it live, shame on you. Go check it out. It's going to be clips coming out. Uh, showing y'all what we did, but we're not going to give it all to y'all. Y'all got to go over to that Patreon. Y'all got to subscribe so y'all can see what we did with my man Magic Man. We're going to have a, uh, Dave, uh, excuse me, Bill Haney in here uh, tomorrow, and we're going to do the same thing on the Patreon. Get on that Patreon. Well, tomorrow for us, but it's actually uh, yesterday for y'all. Let me correct myself. <laughs> yesterday for y'all, so make sure y'all go on over to that Patreon and subscribe. I need y'all to subscribe to that because so, I want y'all to see what this man has to say. The greatest story never told. The greatest story never told. I dig that. Yeah. I believe it too. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I sat, I sit here next to this man um, and I've been knowing you like long time. For, for a distance, for a long, for a long time. Right. Anytime we're ever, you know, if it's a weekend thing, we together every day All doing the, the weekend yep. thing, things like that. But, you know, in between that is just here and there, you know, marry this, happy that, you right. know. Um, so being able to be with you this weekend, being able to feel your energy, and also why I got so hyped up today, I went back and I always just analyzed what I do, what I did. I said, I said, that man out, he out, he outworked me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no. I said, he over there sweating. I said, I know he is. He always got a towel with him anyway. I said, but I ain't had one bead. I gotta right. get a bead he was cool today. Under pressure, I gotta yeah. get a bead today. Okay. You know what I mean? So I'm excited. Another reason why I'm excited today today, I know you have a brain inside you for the game of boxing that is um it's unique. The way you analyze, the way you think, the way you observe, the way you break down, all that kind of stuff. Have you always been like that? I think so. Just you have to develop over yeah. time. Yeah. You know, a lot of things that uh, now is, is just from my experience. Yeah. Just, I've been here a while. You were know you, what I'm were saying? Were you studious as like when you got of back course. to the game? You was of real, course. Yeah. I've always been. Yeah. I've always been very coachable. Yeah. Very teachable. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of times, uh, you know, these young fighters got to open themselves up for that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in today's game, it's hard to even be. Uh, critical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, even if it's constructive, yeah. they don't absorb it like that. Yeah. First word come out of your mouth, you hating. Hold on, let me say this. Uh, social media drops while I'm a professional and I really didn't care about social media. So whatever comments I saw and heard, they came from somebody sending it to me or telling me. I just didn't care. Social media wasn't really relevant when you was coming up in the game. Yeah, I, I, I missed it you by a little bit. You would have been emotional as you would have been an emotional wreck, <laughs> wouldn't you? Uh, no, you I'm would, always on the no, control. No, stop it, stop it. You would have been an emotional wreck. You um, would have been sweating. You've been in wreck. bed at night sweating. <laughs> I, I, I can't see that because I've been under pressure before, and I I'm cool under pressure. And Just you seeing have the to stuff be, that people say about you. Though. I don't take it personal, but yeah. I know everybody got an opinion. Every and everybody got something to say. I just <laughs> never, you know, God didn't put that on me to care what other people thought about well, me. But you, I feel like that's like a part of your story. Mm, no, nah, I could promise you tell you I don't care, but there is a, a lie and a truth. Yeah. And that's what separates. Yeah, sure. Everything. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, yeah, you know, it's a, the narrative. You know, when you say narrative, yeah. you know, it's it's what People want you to think, but yeah. that might not be necessarily the truth. Yeah. So that's why I have an issue. That's what I have an issue with. Yeah. When that crosses over to my truth, uh -huh. then I gotta speak on that. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's just it. That's that's how I see it. But yeah. um, control, I'm always in control. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have to. I have to be. Yeah. Because you know, it's only one bad. You only one bad decision away from. Any, you know, yeah. losing everything. So, yeah. you know, you got to have your head on a swivel out here in this real world. Sure, sure. Did you get a chance to watch Better Be Even Smith last night? I saw the highlights. I yeah. didn't see the complete fight, but yeah. I pretty much got a gist of the fight. He, 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 all right, so here's my thing. You already know. I said last week, I just want to see how healthy he is. He has the kind of style that he doesn't use head movement. He will try to block shots, as you know, but he ain't really making a lot of people miss. Hence... I personally feel like the 
the wear and tear of his kind of style, his age, what he's been through in the ring, I felt like it would show itself against Callum Smith, someone who can box, good good right hand, and could work from the outside. And he he walked through a lot of it, but I didn't see the stumbling that I thought I would see. You know, and you know that at, yeah. at a certain point, everything just starts to show. Like, yo, <laughs> you got you got hurt by a jab. It's I'm wore down. I'm, right, I'm right. physically wore down. Right. You can still be strong and powerful and get somebody, but along the way, you're gonna show your health. I didn't see that last night. No, no, I saw a monster last night. Yeah, I saw a monster, and what I didn't have a chance to do is really highlight. Bavall's last fight. Mm. Even oh, yeah. though he Go won, ahead, talk, yeah. even though he won, I didn't see the Bavall that I expected. Uh -huh. You know, uh, he was pushing a lot of his punches. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. guy he was fighting really didn't have nothing to come back offensively, and he should have been a little bit more sharper than that. Mm -hmm. uh, after seeing what I saw, the highlights from last night, mm. I think better be if walks through Bavall. Really? Personally, I, I, personally, I just believe he walks through him, bro. He's a menace, bro, and I just don't see nobody stopping his style, you know, because a lot of times the skill set really offset the talent. A lot of these guys can fight, but a lot of these guys aren't skillful, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what separates, you feel me, good yeah. fighters from great fighters. Yeah. You feel me? Poise and being able to execute mm -hmm. when you need to execute, having mm -hmm. complete control of a fight. Yeah. I see that in Better Be It because... He don't do a lot of unnecessary movement. No. He don't burn a lot of energy the, uh, until he start letting those hands go. Listen, Bevo, because obviously we know what happened in this fight. Great fight uh, for be Better Beav. He walked through a lot of it, showed himself to be a monster, like you just said. Um, moving forward, the fight that everybody wants is is uh, Dimitri Bevo and, um, and Better Beav here. Um, I think Dimitri is big enough, tall enough, enough skills, can use his feet, fast enough, strong enough. I think b is a complete boxer, and I think he beats better B. You might be right, but one thing about it, I think can b put in back of better B of head that there's a possibility in this fight I can get knocked out. I don't think he can put that in the back of better B of head. You don't think social media from, gonna do that? Hold on, and stop yeah. him from going forward. Yeah. Stop him from being him. Yeah. No, you got to have a fighter in there mm -hmm. that can give those angles. Somebody got to start digging better BF to the body. Somebody got to start hurting this guy. Bevo can go to the body. Bevo can go to the body. What one thing he didn't show in the fight is that he he didn't show he could crack against in, in the last fight right. that he just had. He didn't show he could crack. Good because his technique was a little flawed. Yeah. If you go back and look, it was all upper body. He never really had his lower half connected. But what's the one, the number one to thing you need, that you need against somebody like Better Be? What's the number one thing you need? You gotta have more dog than him. Ooh. You, you gotta, gotta have more, you gotta beat him at his own game, bro. See, you a dog. Why you, you, you gotta listen, beat him at his own game. Well, I'm so. talking about a technical thing, man. That Give me too. something technical. That too. What's, one te what's the technical thing you need to beat somebody that has a style like Arthur Better Be? You gotta have knockout power and you gotta have defense to make him miss and make him pay. So you gotta be able to make him miss first, but you gotta be in position to put some on him when he do. I agree, I agree 100%, but just to make it through the fight and win a decision, you need feet. You gotta be. You gotta be able to control the range and distance. Right, You control defense range and, and distance with the feet and with the jab. Right. Both Bevo, for that division, has, has the best You gotta be them. slick, you gotta be unpredictable, you gotta be cunning, you gotta set traps, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to hurt this man. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's hard to say, but when I look at Better Be, I don't know anybody that can stop that pressure. Dang. I don't know if anybody's slick enough. Bavall ain't slick. Time, time ain't, 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 time Timing ain't. Timing and, you no, know. No, no, I'm talking, I'm saying like time hasn't started to ensue. No, he's technically sound, but he's not slick. Beaver, I'm talking about Better Be. Better be if it's just straight aggression. And so let's go all the way back to what I said before. Straight, straight, aggression, straight aggression. I feel power. like his style is starting to be wear and tear. The only thing that's going to catch up to somebody with that kind of style is time. If if the guys across from him can't do it, time will. So what I'm saying is that time ain't 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 starting. Let to me let me let me use this as an example. When I first fought Glenn Johnson, the first fight, I fought him my style. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the rematch, I fought his, his style. style. Yeah. 
I didn't back up. I wasn't face to face. I ain't moving. Yeah. Everybody in the world thought Glenn Johnson was tougher than me. Yeah. Bruh. Yeah. Everybody in the world thought he was tougher than me. Yeah. I looked him in his face. You ain't tougher than me, dude. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. You ain't came through what I came through. You ain't overcame what I overcame. I know. You, you, was you a talker in the ring? I'm, I've always been like this. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, like was, you, out was, of the you, ring. was you cracking people like, yeah, you... Bro, I always had power, bro. <laughs> that was that was my exclamation. That yeah. was the, you feel me? Yeah. Because that was the difference. I could crack, but I never looked like a puncher. With Glenn Johnson in, this, in, with, with Glenn Johnson in the second fight, was were you, you know, I know that was face to face. Was you talking to him? Was you, was you hitting them? I think I was expressing myself yeah. in the ring. Uh -huh, okay. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. I wanted to express myself, yeah. I, anything I wanted to tell him, yeah. I spoke it right yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. But that's Glenn, the role world Johnson, yeah. bro. Ain't nobody ever backed him up, stayed in his. Yeah. I knew, and buddy, we trained to do that. Yeah. See, you got to go back to the drawing board. Yes, you know, sir. how are these fighters making adjustments? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to be able to see the work, mm -hmm, bro. And if you don't see the work, they ain't doing it. Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. Yeah. You got eight weeks to prepare for this man. Yeah. Bro, you supposed to have a proper game plan. The fight you made me think of that I don't think we're going to be able to see is Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford too. And I, now I they're saying we're gonna it's not going to happen. And yeah. that, that's so unfortunate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not that the outcome was going to be any different, mm -hmm. but, you know, what? maybe you got to think. Maybe, you know, his team is saying, you know what, there might be a better way to get to where we're going. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's still a daunting task to defeat Crawford, bro. And going back to the X's and O's, do you think it was anything that, that Errol Spence in a rematch could, adjustments he could make, eight week camp, 12, yes, 15, I can say 20 that, but, week camp? Yes, this, but, yeah. but will that transfer to the ring fight night. on fight night? Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. that's the difference. How are there? How are they training? I'm glad you're here. How are they preparing? <laughs> Yo, talk to us real quick about how, have you ever had a moment where you did what you were supposed to do in camp, but then it didn't translate in the ring? If you say no, Hold I'm Hold on, a, let me a, say, a, did a, what I was supposed to do in camp and yeah. it didn't translate? Like you, you got a game plan going to the ring and then that game plan don't show up on fight night and you don't fight the way you, you, you know, you initially See, a lot had. of times in the beginning, um, you know, I was a, a lot of times I was just losing weight. When I struggled, I wasn't, I was struggling on my weight. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And it kind of, mm -hmm. but when I prepared straight diet, everything, and I was focused, you know, I, bro, it was hard to beat me. You feel me? Yeah. So I was always confident that if I did the work, bro, I gave myself the best chance to win. Yeah. And I always approached it like that. You feel me? Yeah. Always. Yeah. I just felt like when it came down to a boxing match, I can do enough work that I can beat anybody on any given night. Mm -hmm. I just always felt like that. Glenn Johnson was one of those fighters that was tough, man, because you couldn't hurt him. Mm -hmm. You know, you couldn't knock him out. It was hard to knock him out. He just had a chin. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes you got to take a guy heart. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. You ain't going to be able to knock. You ain't going to be able to make everybody quit. Some guys you got to knock out because mm -hmm. they not going to quit. That's one of those guys like Glenn yeah, Johnson. We went yeah. 24 grueling, grueling rounds, man. But uh, it showed that, hey, man, it, underneath all of this, yeah. you know, it, it's, it, you know, a beast resides. Yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one thing about it, bro, I ain't, I ain't hear too many call outs in my day. Yeah. When nobody calling me out, bro. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, three guys in the game right now? You feel got all, all that that you got the dog, the all, three the whole, guys. Yeah, Terrence, yeah. I think. Yeah, won it. Uh, Abdul. Who's Abdul? Formerly known as. Uh oh. Yeah. Yes. So Tank. Can we sit? Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Can we just call uh, it Tank? <laughs> and bruh, uh, I think man Haney. Just a few, just you know, them lessons, bro. And mm -hmm. I see Shakur Stevenson. Mm -hmm. It's it's just, I mean, they they so close to having everything. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Being able to do it all, but it's just, you feel me? It's like you can have a complete puzzle, but you need those little two pieces to complete it. Yeah. And I just think there's whoever really finds that first between Haney, uh, Shakur. I think you know. They could possibly get it all right yeah. and, and really be the best of the, the remaining crop. You feel me? But yeah. they're missing some 
they're missing some pieces right what you, now. What you feel like Shakir's missing? I think he just gotta he just gotta believe in himself, believe yeah. in his style, mm. believe in you know what I mean what makes him him. Yeah, you feel me? And uh, I don't know? doubt he believes in that because look, you got a guy um, in De Los Santos that's not that wasn't being cooperative, right? Yeah, right. And it's like he still didn't go away from who he is. But let me tell you how he should have fought that fight, bro. Yeah. Where's your counterpunching ability? Yeah. Where's the counterpunching at? You feel me? Yeah. In order to counter, bro, you got to make a guy miss, and then you got to be in position to make him pay. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Make these guys miss. They only got two hands. They yeah. can't throw but one at a time. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. You got to simplify this stuff, man. Yeah. He yeah. got a good jab. He got his feet. Bro, sometimes you got to let these guys come to you. Yeah. And you got to set the trap. Yeah. Stop going straight back all the time. Go back one foot, take a step to the right. You feel me? Yeah. Go back one foot, go to the left. Switch it up, bro. We've Stop seen doing that the same Eric, thing. Seen... You got to be able to adjust. And you might have to switch three times in a round. We were seeing that, but that. we didn't see that in the last fight. We've seen versions of what you just but said. But we watching, right? Yeah. And if you ain't putting hands on somebody, you ain't boxing, <laughs> it's bro. It's time. Right, 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 right. You fencing. Yeah, it's time. Right. You fencing. Yeah. You ain't boxing. Put hands on them boys, Yeah. Bro. <laughs> and it's okay to exchange. See, they don't let the guy exchange. Yeah. The guy got to become vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They won't let mm -hmm. the guy become vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And the biggest trick in the game is false sense of security. Mm. Use that. I don't see a lot of people using that. Mm. Let a guy feel like he getting somewhere and close the door on him. Let mm. him get overconfident. Yes, sir. But you got to have a confidence in your defense to make him miss while you doing all this. That's true. I see that's what Tank does. Tank has a version of that where he lets guys get comfortable and then Tank they plot. fall asleep. Tank plot, yeah. survey, yeah. always yeah. gauging, yeah. always downloading information. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? As mm -hmm. soon as he gets you figured out, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing I'm afraid of with that style is that Tank can find himself behind the eight ball needing a knockout mm -hmm. if he don't stay ahead of these guys in yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. He can make these fights easier. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. By And then when you out boxing these guys, they got to take the risk. Yeah. You feel me? Yep. They got to take the risk. Yeah. In yeah. any fight I'm in, bro, it was it was mandatory that I got my respect in the first two rounds. I'm going to crack your ass. Mandatory. Mandatory. I don't mandatory. care who you is. <laughs> <laughs> That's mandatory. You got to get your respect. I tell you, I got to watch you. I got to watch. Go to, you got to go, get your respect. Go get on that Patreon and watch what this man <laughs> said last night. I told you last night, I said, there ain't no filling out process. That's what you did Not say. for me. You're right, right. But I got to fill them out. I give, I give them that first round. I ain't giving you no first round. But guess what? Round. Yeah, that first round is all I need to know, though. Yeah. Now I'm going to execute my game yeah. plan on you. Yeah. All yeah. I need to know is what speed you use. Yeah. What power? And I'm going to test. I'm going to see your balance. Yeah. I'm going to know everything I need to do. Now, what about Haney in the last fight that he just had, Regis Progray? I mean. Haney looked good. Haney looked good. But again, I knew that Progress was going to come in and struggle yeah. mightily because of his fight before that. Yeah. And I looked at it. Progress feet work, footwork was horrible. And Ooh. it's always been that way. Ooh. If you're not standing still, stuck in quicksand, he can't be effective. And that's why when you, when you talk about a fighter losing, we, we say that L stands for lesson because you, you, it, you lo what losing does, it causes you to stop and watch what's going on. And like this is what I said about my fight against Kell Brook. Every single round, anything, only thing in my mind was I'm going to catch him. I'm going to knock him out. I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to knock him out. And, and everything that happened before that ain't going to matter. Right. I don't get the knockout now. All of that matters. matters. Everything That's matters. what happens when when somebody gets a knockout. They 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 get a win. They overlook what they did wrong. The lo the losses will will cause you to look at what you've done wrong. I think even though uh, Regis won uh, won that fight against uh, Zoro, um, he didn't look good. He didn't look good. He didn't look good. I I don't think that he didn't learn a lesson, but I think that that's just his style. I think this was style make fights. 
um, I thought that uh, Haney and his dad, they were able to uh, promote, we're going up to 140 and we're taking on the best, but they knew he really truly wasn't the best. Right, right. Yeah. We got to say, exactly. we got to say Tiafimo pr probably is the best at 140 outside of Most Devin definitely, Haney, of most course. definitely, man. And I saw him training this morning. Tio. Tio, man. Tio. He, he's on a mission, bro. Yeah. And he upside down doing rocky sit ups. And yeah, nah. yeah. Keep that energy, bro. Yeah, yeah. Keep yeah, that energy. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I look at uh, that loss he had, man, I knew. You know, what I'm saying it's like he never got off stage. Mm -hmm. He oh. never got off stage. Uh. And leading up to that fight, it was Ooh. all social media content. Ooh. And I think that cost him that that fight. Uh -huh. Then he got back to the drawing board. Uh -huh. You feel me? Now uh -huh. he's locked in. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know if that Crawford call I was just, you know, clickbait or is that something he really I wants think it's to something do? He actually wants to but do. But man, you talking about a legendary fight on paper? Yeah. I, I mean, this I could feel be the, same the biggest way. of the biggest. I feel the same way. People's gonna talk about him coming up from 135 to 147. That's but it's natural you know, because he's growing. Sure, you feel me? sure. He was a young man. Now he's coming into his age. People don't understand. Right. That. People his don't body understand. Body is growing naturally. Tank is. I'm gonna go ahead and tell the truth. Tank fights at 135. Probably walks around 145, 150, whatever the case may be. That ain't the truth. But the truth is, yes, he could fight at 140. He's not going to fight at 140, but he could. And you know what? Haney could fight at 154. He's not going to, right, but he, he could. Yeah, the truth yeah. is, a yeah. lot of fighters, we all fight outside of our weight class. You didn't do that, but most I fighters I did that do. for a long period of my career. Yeah, at, because And light heavy? Light heavy was killing me. What? What? And the amateurs, light heavy was 175. That, yeah. No, 178. 178, yeah, yeah. I'm having to lose three pounds for where my body was comfortable in the amateurs all those but years. But you wasn't, but you, you wasn't Bruh. losing 15, 20 pounds, though. Says who? Oh. <laughs> Says who? Oh. <laughs> this my natural weight right here, bro. I always was a big like yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred pounds. Was you nothing. comfy over there? Yeah. Two hundred pounds was nothing for me. My dad here yet? Yeah, I'm comfy you feel too. Me? Damn it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. I always had to lose weight, man. I had to be smart about it. It wasn't until I imported, uh, till I got employed, Dudley Pierce, my strength and conditioning coach, me and Buddy McGurk. Got we came in the game together with Dudley Pierce, and I'm here to say, man, Dudley has worked with over 100 champions. Yeah, since way back when. Yeah, and he's the leader in his field, bro. Yeah, yeah. Is he still working? Unassuming, quiet. Yeah, okay. still working. That's all he's ever did: strength yeah. and condition. Yeah, and he's the best in the game, bro. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. So that's another uh, one of the guys that I work closely with. Mm -hmm. So when I get a fighter. It's going to be me and Dudley with this fighter. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Dudley is going to be the one on the road with you, yeah. training you, yeah. making sure you get the right dietary supplements yeah. and everything. Yeah. Food is cooked and prepared. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about nothing but training. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's where I want to get to. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So we can have a training camp where a guy can come stay six weeks, get this type of work. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. go out and perform. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, that's what we're working on, man. I, I can't wait. I'm excited. Um, I love I it. I definitely see myself working with, you know, world-class fighters, bro, because I think I got something to offer yeah. if it's just education. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? You got to yeah. know pretty much everything about this game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying I know it all, but, man, I've been, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you look at guys, you know, that uh, I was amongst on that Olympic team that – Great Olympic team of 96, bro. Yeah. You know, I've been around give, a long time, bro. Give the people some of the experiences you had being on that 96 team. Um, the list is is vast. Uh, for, um, Fernando Vargas is on that list. Um, De La Hoya, of course. Or, uh, no, no. Not De La Hoya, excuse me. Um, Mayweather, Mayweather, of course, of course is on yeah. that list. Um, the, the list goes on. Um, uh, some of the names. Eric Morrell from uh, Wisconsin was yeah. a beast. Uh, Zahir Raheem from Philadelphia now resides in uh, Atlanta. Got a big gym in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Was a beast mm -hmm. from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. You know, David Reed. David Reed, the that only, was the name I was The stuck only gold medalist. Yeah. And he did it in crazy fashion. Yeah. Needing a knockout yeah. to get it done. Yeah. You know. So that was my first time ever, like, really You look, You remind me of David that. Reed a little bit, Stop bro. it. Oh, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I'm telling you. We're not going to do that. I'm telling you. Yeah, I did have a similar yeah. style David to David. Was, David was explosive. Yeah, that right was hand was killer, man. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, he had a uh, he received a, 
a damaged eye in the Pan American mm -hmm, games mm -hmm. against a guy that eventually became world champion uh, from Puerto Rico. I can't think of his name right now. Um, uh, but yeah, he hurt David Reed and that eye yeah. was a droopy eye. Yeah, he, they started yeah. coming over his eye. Yeah. So they kind of had to rush David on out yeah, there. I know, I know, and I when know. he fought Trinidad, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. The great Trinidad, yeah. you know, he kind of, yeah. uh, it, it showed that he kind of moved, they kind of moved him too quickly, but they had to because he was against you know, for the time sure, because sure, the, sure, the sure. eye was going to be his. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's stick there with the amateurs for a second. Um, always, I don't do it anymore, but I used to always, especially when I first turned pro, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. was missing the amateurs. I was like, man, I just want to go back to being on those, the team. Those some good days. Traveling, you know, doing a camp together, all those kinds of things. We would go out, we would go bowling. You know what I mean? We would go to a nightclub or something like that. Kind of talk about the camaraderie of, of being on the Olympic team, especially with those those names right there. You know, uh, uh, with me, it was a, a different type of situation. We did do all of that, but I was an older, older statesman. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? These yeah. are younger guys. Yeah. I'm 25, 26. So, mm -hmm. you know, me and Clay Bay, me and uh, Nate Jones yeah. were kind of like more, you know, yeah. uh, we hung out a lot yeah. more than, you know, but we all was a group. Yeah. You know, I never forget in Augusta, Georgia, we met James Brown. You know oh, what I'm saying? Sweet. He hosted us. What? It was crazy, man. It was one of those moments in time. Dang. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, we had a, a vacation getaway in my hometown of Orlando. Okay. Brought the whole they Olympic took the whole team. team down there. The whole Olympic team went That's down clean. there. It was crazy, bro. Yeah. We just took over International Drive, man. And yeah. I, they had a little bus of me in the, uh, one of the biggest sports bars down there. And, you know, we came and we unveiled that. Yeah. And, and it was crazy, man. Um, yeah, so those memories always live with me, man. I remember when, uh, God bless, rest in peace, Roger Mayweather was my roommate because uh, oh, okay. in, in uh, at the uh, Olympic trials in Oakland. Okay. And, man, we partied. Uh, yeah. Had to be a pimp party we went to. <laughs> I swear to God. In Oakland. Yeah, <laughs> but we had a ball, yeah. though, bro. Those yeah. are times wow. I'll never forget, man. And, uh, and then watching these young, young guys become great they, in, I was gonna ask. Right, in their own right and seeing it yeah. right there, man. It was just, it's beautiful. And you were a little bit older than everybody right. else as well. Right. So like when you turned pro, did you look back and watch with those guys? You watched well, everything course. that was guys? Yeah. I mean, of course. Yeah, you still I, I saw it all. Still supported each of other. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's always going to be a family. We you see know the, what I'm saying? The 2020 team, a lot of those guys turned pro with ESPN, the guys from the 2020 Olympic right, team. Right, right. And we see them always at the fight supporting one another. You know what I mean? And that's how it's supposed to be, man. Because, yeah. you know, the, the brotherhood that, that we share, it can be better, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. we all can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's, you know, when you look at the culture, man, I think we're, we're, we're headed toward more unity. Yeah. I believe and I want to feel that. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Um, and, and we can learn something from all these guys' experiences, bro. Yeah. I mean, when I was young, man, I would have loved for a guy to reach back yeah. and, and pay me a little attention, show me a, a little interest mm -hmm. with a guy that has been there and gone and mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times that's all everybody is missing. You gotta get back in the US program, man. Every time I go to a national tournament, them kids go crazy. And they end up fighting hard. Harder, right? You already you know how they go. They, they fight harder because you're yeah. there. Yeah. I remember Roy came to see us in the Olympics in Colorado Springs, and we'll never forget yeah. how that just the buzz that yeah. we had, the, you know, the great Roy yeah. Jones on our Olympic, you know, camp, and it was crazy. He stayed about two, three days with us, man. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget that. Was did you ever have a dog moment when he when he when he when he when he was there? A dog moment? A dog. A dog moment nah. where you like you watching him like No, I'm always no, no, I was just no, I'm an yeah. amateur. Yeah, bro. I know, but I, it wasn't even like that then. Yeah. You feel me? It was like, no, nah. but I was whispering to my God, we fought. Cause they never I said, oh, yeah. I fought Roy before. Yeah. <laughs> 13, you feel me? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I fought him before man. Yeah. And then, you know, but my goal was to capture the goal that eluded Roy Jones. I know, I know, I know, I know. That was my, yeah. That was my moment. Yeah. When I got touched. Yeah. You feel me? When God showed me clearly where I needed to be in yeah. my life. You feel me? Was that a sense of? Was that like a sense of competition? He didn't do it, so I'm gonna do it. Or was it like almost like you? You're you're like um, you're you're um. It was What's that, the word I want to use? It uh, was, it was, it was. That was horrible what they did to him. Yeah, 
my heart went out for him. Yeah. You feel me? And you whole USA, bro. So like you were avenging him. That's, avenging, a, that's the word I was yeah. saying. Yeah, it's like you were avenging, avenging him. Avenging, yeah. Clean. That's clean. Yeah, and if, just like I did when I went to Australia yeah. and knocked Danny Green ass out. I was avenging <laughs> then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was avenging then, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. So, you know. Boy, that's going to get you in the Hall of Fame right there. No, I'm going to tell you. That right there going to get you in the Hall of Fame. It's like, wow, you was an Avenger. Out, <laughs> as many fans and, and as many people claimed Roy Jones was they idol. Yeah. Then nobody won't know get back. <laughs> then nobody won't know get back. No. <laughs> Name one person want to no. get back for Roy Jones. Nobody. No. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. No. If it was me, I would have wanted to get some get back. For sure. Why you think I'm why you think my name don't get called, Sean? You wanted four fights? I'm just saying, why you think my name never got called, bro? Because of who you are. What you like, you, you you're not an easy night. For nobody. I mean, you talking but, to me about what I same same stuff, right, you know what I mean? Right. Same stuff. Nobody wants to deal with that. Nobody wants to prepare for that. Nobody wants to deal with the unknown. That's what came with me. I'm not gonna speak for you, but what came for me was the unknown. What what style is he gonna come with? Um, is he gonna stop? You know what I mean? How in shape is he truly? How hard do we really? There was a lot of unknowns that came for me. So the guys that got past that unknown, they ain't want to deal with it again. No, no, no. You know, no. and and because of because of me and my understanding of what the fight game was at that point in time, I was like, oh no, Keith gets to move on. I don't I don't get a rematch with him. He gets to move on. That was an immediate rematch waiting to happen. The fight with Earl, he gets to move on, you know, because in my mind, that's how the business of boxing was supposed to be. You know what I mean? Right. So had the Sean Porter now, 36 Sean Porter, right after the the the, the fight, I'm I'm calling them out because I understood I understand now, now. in retrospect how big the moments were and how big the next moment would, would be. You know what I mean? That's hell of a lot. Yeah, that's great, man. What you like most about uh, Terrence Crawford? His resilience, bro. Yeah. His resilience and what he's standing on. Like, he's an unmovable object. They not going to change his mind mm -hmm. on who he feels he is. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Just like... Me, bro, I, I wasn't gonna change my mind. You feel me? I can tell you, a lot of people tried. A lot of people didn't think I could do it. Yeah. But I never doubted myself. Yeah. Not one time. Yeah. That's what I want the world to know. I never doubted me. Yeah. Because I knew what was inside of me, bro. I got one for you. I got one for you. Uh, me and Bo was was cooling. Might have been last year. Croft? Yeah. Might have been last year or the year before. We was cooling. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, it was last year. I looked at him, I said, uh, you re you regret the way you handled the Olympic team and everything like that. I was, he was like, yeah. I was like, if you could do it different, would you do it different? He's like, yeah. What I was alluding to, what I was talking about to you guys, he was on the Pan American team. And um, I do believe we're in Venezuela. I think that's how it happened. We're in Venezuela and he gets into it with our team. I I believe oh, somebody wow. on our team. I don't remember exactly how. It went. Long story short, he gets bounced off of the Pan Am team, and they bring somebody else in that qualifies and goes on to do the things that he was doing. So the same thing, um, kind of from from a political standpoint, kind of the thing you knew was you had to be on one team. If you got on one team, you was good to you know try to keep going, and you would. If they, you on, they would, if you're the representative of the Pan American Games, you, you they kind of looked at you like, right, it's like yeah, you know yeah. he's gonna be next to whatever the case may be. It was like you were building a rapport and a reputation with the judges, with the everybody a, a part of the, the USA Olympic organization and all of those things. And so when he doesn't win the trials, it's it kind of it's, it's kind of clear that you know yo, that's robbery. You, you're doing him dirty. Did they rob him of the trials or he beat? What, what, how did it happen? Did he really lose? He lost. The, so the fight decision? that he lost was Danny Garcia. I don't know oh, how okay. to, I don't really true. I can't front. Like I remember exactly how the fight went and things like that. But he, a lot like me, was one of the guys that you punch the dude and you just don't get the point. You I punch mean, the dude and you just that. don't get Trust the point. Trust me. <laughs> Here's another true story. And I think I told you on the podcast before. We're down there in Venezuela. Right. The fight that he did win in Venezuela, he, boom. Knocked him out. Knocked dude out. 
See, that like, you ain't got to worry about the score cards. Didn't you get that. the point. Didn't get he, the point that, that he, he landed. Him out with. Oh my God. That's, that's a crazy. true story. Didn't get the point that he landed to, to knock, knock the dude out. That's with. crazy. So, again, a lot like you go to the Patreon. A lot like you, your story has always, that adversity has always been there. Adversity, Same thing for, sure. for him. It's always been there. And so I asked him, I said, yo, you, do you regret not, you know, handling things differently is what I say. He said, yeah. I said, if you could do it differently, what would you, he said, yeah. Well, that he was said, a lesson. I really wanted to be, I really wanted to be on the Olympic team. team. Yeah, things like that. Yeah. But it was, focus, the focus is, is around his branding. And he carried it into the pros. He's now getting fans and things like that based off of what he's done in the last like two years. Right. But prior to that, because he's standoffish, because he doesn't like doing interviews, because you know he's got the mug more than he's got the smile, so on and so forth. People not really messing with him. I feel kind of feel like the same for you. Did you ever look at maybe changing your brand, changing who you were? I'm the magic man, bro. Nah, yeah, because all of that made me who I was. Yeah. If it, if I would have had a layup. Yeah. If they'd have laid it up for me, I probably wouldn't have been Ugh. that type of fighter that I became. Yeah. See, when you know that's coming through the door, you ain't, ain't you ain't got nobody on mm -hmm. your team. Mm -hmm. You know you gotta do it yourself, bro. Mm -hmm. And you ain't relying on no help. Yeah, get his face off the screen. I don't want to see him. You ain't relying on his, on yeah. nobody help because yeah. you know, like 50 Cent say, it ain't nobody to run to. Yeah. It's just me. Hold up, put him back on real you quick. Feel put me? him back on real quick. I forgot. Um how do you think that fight looks between Teofimo, Teofimo Lopez and, and Terrence Crawford. It's a it's a chess match for sure. Yeah. Of skills and talent. Yeah. At the highest proportion. Remember when Roy, Roy see a lot of people don't understand, man. Go back and look at the skill set that we were using in those fights, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Think that, about the skill set that we were using. I kind of feel like, like I'm point I'm, first, second, and the third one. I'm brother. poking people when I say y'all understand like how fast we think and the things that we have to react to and so on and so forth. We looking at Roy, you can see him thinking. He you was, can see his. You can see his thoughts. He was sharp. His third, the third fight, he was sharp, bro. Yeah, I know he beat he you. He was the sharp, third bro. Fight. No, he didn't beat me, but he yeah. was sharp. Yeah. He was sharp, man. That's when I had my red bottoms on. You know, you ain't, you ain't see that until I went over the ropes and uh, both feet uh, came uh, off the ground. You feel me? But no, nah, that was a he was sharp, in that sharp as hell, yeah. bro. And Emmanuel Stewart knew it. Yeah. And I knew it. I knew I had to get in dog shape. Yeah. But I commend Roy, bro. Yeah. Because he did something Hopkins was scared to do. He ran from that rematch, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Hopkins ran Roy down for the rematch 15 years later when it wasn't even, come on, bro. It was insignificant. I mean, but that's the only one I ain't get a chance to get back, bro. And that 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 really it don't mess with me. But it, I just know that wasn't me in that fight. I know that. And if I know that, then that means the whole world need to know that. Yeah. Go back and watch Tarver Hopkins. And yeah. If that was me. I'll pay it, bro. It wasn't me in that fight, bro. Yeah. And that's the moment. I believe everything changed, and I never got that rematch. Hold on, put it back up there, because he started talking about himself. We was trying to talk about Tiafima Lopez and, and- But we can and, talk about them. And Terrence Crawford. I got Crawford. Magic I got Man, Crawford. we talk about Magic Man. I got Crawford because I see him being a bigger Tiafima. Yeah. He's a bigger Tiafima that can do Ooh. everything. Ooh. You feel me? Ooh. Yeah, I, yeah, bigger T.O. T.O. Got, got all the intangibles, power, boxing, everything. Yeah. But I think Crawford has that too, but he's bigger. He's stronger. You put, you it, you put it on the size. I actually put it on the experience. Experience, but I he, think I, it's the experience. I don't think it's the size. I think it's the experience. Experience in the pro game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't T.O. Think, is fought for undisputed. I don't think T.O. has got enough, but... He's fought for undisputed. He, yeah. You know, he's fought some names. He ain't fought a marrying image of himself. No, nah, it's gonna be you know tough. What I mean? Yeah, yeah it, it's, uh, Crawford, it's hard to find Crawford someone. But seen it all at these at the level that they're at. It's hard to find someone that's gonna match them. Sure. Skill for skill, sure. talent for talent, sure. and heart for heart. Yeah, that's 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 Duran Hagler. You know, it's those type, and, and you can only get that every now and again. I think Teal and Bud has that. You feel me? Let's set the record straight. We understand, or at least give us your opinion on. Jerron Boots Ennis not being able to fight Terrence Crawford, that fight doesn't happen, correct? Uh, it's like if if when you when you're talking about Crawford Teofimo, yeah, you talk about Crawford Canelo, yeah, 
those guys are outside his weight class. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Outside of his weight class. Yeah. If he's gonna campaign, and I and I said this, yeah. The only reason I think Ennis has to take a back seat is to the rematch of Spence and Crawford. No rematch. We what what needs to happen next at 147. If that is, rematch doesn't happen, uh-huh. And Crawford still campaigning as the champ. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He has to face Ennis. Uh-huh. I don't know about next. I don't know if we can do something that we give Crawford because yeah. he's been out a minute now. Yeah. Give him sort of like a quote unquote, not a tune up, but somebody that can tune him up. Yeah, somebody that can he can get some great rounds in. Uh-huh. A contender, but not you know a, maybe a, a ex champion or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's not at the top of the level, but somebody that's definitely gonna give him a tough fight. Mm-hmm. That person then. We need to see Ennis. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm, feel me? I mm-hmm. think that shows that Crawford is still the best fighter in the world at 147 pound for pound. Beating and Ennis, right? Be- not not Ennis. The, the tune-up. No, he's st- Why does he need the tune-up? To make sure that he's still... Oh, that's what that is. He, he needs to run, get the ring rust off. Uh-huh. These guys got to get active. Yeah. That's why we're not seeing <laughs> these guys perform on yeah, stage. Yeah. They, they don't have enough reps. Yeah. Everybody, and I'm going to use... Everybody... It's coming from with a two-year layoff. Yeah, Just like yeah, Wilder, yeah, one yeah. round in two years. Yeah. Nothing is conducive to, to be successful in that way. Mm-hmm. We got to get these reps. Guys need three fights a year, bro. Yeah. In a 12-month cycle. I agree. I said that. Three and fights Ant a year. was looking at me. I said that. And was looking at me like, come on, Sean. That's a lot. No, no, no. Three fights a year. Yeah. Win, I- win lose, draw. You got you got the, the, the sometimes you go through a war. You might need a little bit more time. But for the most part, everybody, no matter what, where you are, if you're at the top of your game and you want to remain you there, still you still need, need to those be in reps. the ring three you times. You need a those year. reps, bro. One hundred, one hundred. Yep. Tell him what you think about your Ron Boos in this. He's a beast, man. He's yeah. a beast. Still, a little, still, you know, he's still young a little bit. He ain't. I, I don't. I don't see him as the experienced veteran yet. Yeah. Still, some layers that he can add. Yeah. But boy, when he becomes. A complete fighter. Yeah. I mean, I can see him having the same intangibles as Crawford. Yeah. We're gonna have to see he got that chin though. Yeah. That, you ain't gonna go, but as far as your chin will allow you. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, you're gonna have to take a shot. Yeah. You're gonna have to take somebody's shot. You feel me? Now I think that that is a mirroring fight. I think oh, yeah. that they boots bring the same type of and but have the set. exact same everything. Whereas I I can see some similarities. Between Tail and Bud, but I think right here, these guys got got it's it's mirroring. But when you look at this, and you see how he performed against Spence, yeah. I think that heart check. Yeah. I think when it come down to it, yeah, having that, who has the oh, most yeah. dog? Oh yeah, Bud gonna push. Bud County, bro. But <laughs> Bud, Bud County. County. <laughs> Bud County, man. Bud For County. Real. Yeah. yeah. You uh you 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 talked to Bud? Y'all 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 spent any time together? Yeah, of course. We yeah. Talk. I mean, like beyond. I'm mean, like in the gym, gym, gym atmosphere. Bro, you, bro, they all hear me. I don't want him on the screen no more, please. Sean, I want him on the screen. Sean, they all hear me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they all hear me. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Because I can tell they hear me. Because yeah. I hear, I hear what I'm hearing. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm gonna just keep on delivering this message. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You feel me? And hopefully it can help these guys. Yeah. You feel me? Inadvertently. Yeah. Inadvertently, it you know. Cause it's all information. You yeah. just gotta be able to listen and get the. Yeah. You feel me out of it. Listen, the 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 what what even sparked you getting here, um, was the tweets that we did on NUA and in yes. Figueroa. That's really what sparked the the the. Oh yeah, let me do that. And then it was like, oh, we gotta do it. You know, <laughs> what you think about NUA? And I, I'm asking, even though I know, you know, what you think about NUA? You're not. A, 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 he's a complete talent. Yeah, complete talent has a unlimited up. up the ceiling is the ceiling is out of here. Yeah, yeah. He still ain't. Yeah, the ceiling's out of here. Agree. But uh, when you look at his resume, it's level of competition. Mm-hmm. When you got guys like Estrada, Chocolito, yeah, around hovering around his weight class, yeah, and we don't see those proven champions on his resume. Mm-hmm. Then I feel like you feel me. Those guys should be on his resume uh-huh. with all of the hype uh-huh. and all of the promotion and the marketing that he's getting. Uh-huh. We should have seen a knockout of Chocolito. We should have seen a domination of Estrada. Yeah, because those two guys are proving that they're the, the the cream of the crop around those small weight class yeah. and have been for some years. Yeah. So those are interesting fights. Mm-hmm. Um, Rambasi is his name. Is a guy that I think going to be 
going to be tough in another year or so. But we need to find somebody around that 126, 130. And I think anyway, will probably show the world what he's truly made of right at the lightweight limit, 135. 135. I think he's going to have to move gonna up, up there. to get the the fights, the marquee fights that uh-huh. we need uh-huh. to see him in. I think that would do wonders for his brand. And maybe the whole world can see that, yeah. you know, this guy could be pound for pound, number one. But let me tell you who we've been overlooking. Better be a, we've been overlooking this man. He tw- How many knockouts? 20, Nine, 20 yeah. 20, 20 knockouts. 20, you know. Yeah. 20 opponents, 20 knockouts, yeah. and the way he's been doing it. Yeah. There's not a more dominant champion yeah. than Better Be of right now. And I'm talking about domination. That's your weight class, bro. That's my weight class. Oh, used, used to, to be, be my weight, weight class. Yeah, it used to, yeah. It used to be that your used weight to be my class. weight class, light heavyweight. How does that fight look? Me and Magic Man and Better Be. How you gonna hit me? How you gonna land that shot he looking How for? How you gonna say that about you, but you ain't say that about Bevo? Bro, I... I got oh, head you know, movement. You, yeah, you know. Hold yeah. on, I got head movement. I got <laughs> I got that shit with me, bro. Come on, man. Look yeah. at me, 23 years in the game. I ain't never been cut. Yeah. Who can say that? You no. Know? Never been cut, Sean. Mm. In a boxing match, amateur or pro. Oh, well, oh, you had to get real specific though. Who can say a boxing that? match. <laughs> Who can say that? I don't know too many people can say nah, that. Uh-uh. So that means, uh-huh. bro, when it comes down to defense. Yeah. They weren't touching me. Yeah. I don't think a guy ever hit me with his best shot. His best shot. His best shot. Uh-huh. Um, other than Danny Green when he almost tore my head off with that hook. <laughs> and I and I took that shot. Uh-huh. That's, wow. that's 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 what I mean, man. You you only going to go as far as your chin lets you. Yeah. Cuz this boxing. Yeah. And it's it, it don't take much to walk into a punch. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I try to tell these guys throw combinations. Throw four punches. This dude gonna walk into the fourth punch, bro. I'm glad I'm not the only one I'm saying serious. that. I'm glad I'm not the I'm only serious. one saying that. Combination punches get the job done. I'm sitting with my wife. We watching the fight. And our she, when she on one side of the table, I'm on the other side of the table. And she said, why doesn't he just keep going? I looked at her. I said, that's what I always say. <laughs> How you know that? She said, I know what I'm talking about. Guys, why don't they keep going? Conditioning. Is it, is it conditioning and also the way these guys are being taught to fight? Hey, conditioning, but it's a whole big piece of conditioning. Mental fortitude. Yeah. Yeah. Mental fortitude, yeah. bro. Yeah. Your body is only going to go so far. Yeah. But your mind can take you the whole way. 100. When your body give up on you, you got to have a mind, bro. 100. How you look when you fight tired is what you see from a champion and a real fighter. Yeah. How does he fight when he dead ass tired? Yeah. That's when you know you got a real champion, bro. Yeah. Because a lot of these, they going to fold when they get fatigued. Yeah. They going to fold, bro. Wow. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. It's mental fatigue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can't see through nobody. Mm-hmm. So how can you rate somebody mental focus yeah. and fortitude? Yep. You can't. Yeah. That's why they couldn't never prepare for me, bro, because I ain't on the tail of the tape. When they talk about it being in you. It's in you to that, fight. Uh, exactly. I, there's really no way to teach mental fortitude. Like I, I learned. You got to, you got you got a lot. You got to study, bro. You got to focus. You got to meditate. I, you got to visualize. I was about to say, yeah, like I learned those things you from my visualize. dad. Visualize. But it's also built in me. It's built in me to go through a lot. My dad took me through a lot and made sure that I was hard as a rock every fight. But it's also in me. But you telling me there's also ways that you can teach. And or build your mental fortitude. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Beyond beyond the physical. Beyond the physical. Yeah, like like yeah. running hills in the mountains and Bro, stuff like read, that. Hey, you gotta take yourself through it. You feel me? What are you thinking about on your long runs? Mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. in your head? Mm-hmm. What type of music you listening to? Mm-hmm. You feel me? What Look, you, what I was running yourself? one time. What are you I telling was running, yourself when nobody's around? I was running five miles one time and I was like, I thought to myself, Muhammad Ali ain't had this when he was running. Took my headphones out, put them away, took them joints back out. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Right, you know what right, I mean? Because right. then now you stuck with your own thoughts, you know? But for me, it was a lot of visualization, no matter what it was I was doing. And, and my, my boy uh Malcolm out there, he know I'm 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 all about manifesting things. And that's what that's how I feel like how I was in the ring. I would meditate and think about and visualize so much. Then on fight night, I'm ready to make sure make whatever I thought was ha- gonna happen, 
manifest it and make it happen, you know? I'm a big component of that, yeah. you know? When I look back, I manifested everything. Yeah. Because it was the one vision yeah. that got me everywhere I was at. Yeah. And it was that one time I came to the house and I turned the TV on and he popped up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that and I've been running ever since, bro. Yeah. I got off that couch. Yeah. In the condition I was in. Yeah. I ran, bro. Cause I knew I had to do something. I had to get off that couch. Mm -hmm. And seeing Roy Jones and that mother get robbed, bro, that shit, that was something I'll never forget. Yeah. I knew right then. My purpose. Yeah, yeah. I knew my purpose. Yeah. Cause I'm sitting here right now, and I'm in a in this situation, and my whole life is falling apart. And '88, this man come on to bro. I'm like, oh my god, what the hell am I doing? Let me. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? God yeah. say this could be you, son. Yeah. What you doing, bro? Yeah. You got a son. You got a family depending on you. No, bro. You got to do better than this. Mm -hmm. You can't be no statistic. Mm -hmm. You can't be a Another number, you gotta do something different, bro. Mm -hmm. And if it ain't you, then who? Yeah. So when I had my son, bro, that shit kinda really put everything in perspective for me with this whole, see, I'm doing all this at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find myself. Mm -hmm. So having to go fall down to mm -hmm. get back up, mm -hmm. you know, but when I got up, bro, it was, I, was, I was ready, I was focused, and yeah. I didn't let nobody, you know, throw me off my, 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 my place, you yeah. know what I mean? I, when you beat Roy Jones, like you say, better be. Yeah. When you beat Roy Jones, bro, yeah. you can see yourself beating anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. care what their name is. <laughs> I can see myself beating them all, son. Mm -hmm. True. That's the truth. We're going to come back to that. That's gonna We're going to end with the motivation. We're going to kind of dive into that a little bit. I want to talk about PBC. PBC making a move to Amazon now. Way, way back, man, and I had such a fun time when we launched. I say we, and you was a part right, of that. Right, we, right. when we launched um, PBC, and I don't think you were there for this photo shoot, but but I like to call them AH. AH had about 30 fighters go to. We all went out to LA, and we did this photo shoot. And I mean, like, just all of us was just kicking it. We doing this photo shoot. It was amazing. And um, he gave boxing a different opportunity than it had had and for a very long time. We on Spike for you. We on um we on um NBC, CBS, we're all over the place. And um he gave a lot of people an opportunity that prior to that, like now we just, we well we just left Showtime, but prior to that you either had Showtime or you had nothing. You know what I mean? Um talk to us about that launch and what you remember from, you know, was that 2015? When we launched that, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a good time was, in boxing. Yeah, man, I'm 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 one of the flagship fighters. Yeah. That, oh yes. That usher. You want to go? You want to go back? Uh, let's we, go back further we, than that. We got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go we back further to. than that. Excuse me. Yeah. But my dear friend, rest in peace, was Vern Farge. Yes, sir. My homie, my dog. Yeah. Right there from Georgia. Yeah. We was on the same regional team. You understand? He was a couple years before me. But I started when, you know, right there before the mm -hmm. 92 Olympics, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so every, after every fight, we fought on each other undercards a couple of times. I fought on his, he fought on mine. Mm -hmm. But Vernon Forrest was Al Heyman's first fighter. Yes, sir. And me and Vernon was like this. So everything good happened to Vernon, I was aware of it. He was speaking to me on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, man, I, you know, I know this guy, Bob, 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 Al Heyman, a good dude, he's real, he's about us. Yeah. And he's gonna make some things happen for us in this in this business and you know, blah, blah, blah. And because Vernon and I was so close, it was a no brainer. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. started working, we started seeing things happening and things was different. And you know, uh, I'm getting main events dates now on Showtime and HBO, mm -hmm. so is Vernon and we're moving. But that moment in time you're talking about when all those champions was on that stage, that was the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight. Hold up, let's 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 pause it real quick. Um, when you got with with AH, he hadn't been in boxing, but based on what you saw happen in the Vernon Forest, you were able to trust what AH said he was gonna do for you. No, Vernon said he had a gentleman that is in the boxing. He's trying to make some plays, some big moves in the boxing. He's coming into the boxing game. Mm -hmm. Vernon had already was very aware 
had been talking and working with Al. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Through some relationships that he had. And as Vernon was talking with Al, he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. I was the closest thing to Vernon at the time mm -hmm. for his fighter, mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. homeboy, whatever. I used to go to Atlanta all the time and hang out with Vernon after fights. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He'd invite me up and everything. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, we, we I, you know, Al was one of those smart brothers, bro, that had everything, knew it all, yeah. you know, uh, and, and I was confident that there's nothing that he couldn't do in this business, yeah. nothing. You feel me? He had the support. You feel me? He put a lot of key players around him. Mm -hmm. You feel me? When you mm -hmm. look at guys like Sam Man. Watson, mm -hmm. and if you ever known his sons, Brandon, mm -hmm. you know, uh, those guys, man, are, are real good people. Mm -hmm. If you've met Sylvia, you know, these they're smart business mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and with Al experiences and this other music business and concert going and all that, it was just natural with the people he knew mm -hmm. that, you know, boxing could be something that he could thrive in, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. Even now, I didn't doubt that after Showtime, yeah. failed and did whatever they wanted to do, got out of boxing. I was confident that Al would be oh, able yeah. to oh, supply, yeah. Oh, yeah. fulfill, and, and make a, another great situation. Yeah. And that's what a leader, you know what I mean, as powerful as Al does, yeah. he makes sure everybody's good. But to that point, Amazon, PBC, what you think about PBC, That's boxing gonna be huge. on Amazon? It's going to be huge, bro. Yeah. It's going to be huge. They got the numbers. Yeah, got the, the numbers. The numbers are there. So Yeah. Um, and they got the fighters, too. It's they a got great time. It's a yeah. great time. But what we putting out there? Yeah. Yeah. What we putting out there, bro? Yeah. Yeah. We putting one person out there. Mm -hmm. We putting two. Mm -hmm. We putting three. Yeah. Are we putting twenty? Mm -hmm. Who gonna really carry it? Yeah. Can't just depend on one person. Yeah. You need about six or seven killers, bro. All right, between you and me. Six if, or seven if, killers. If there's gonna depend on one of us between you and me, who 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 you want them to depend on? It ain't who I want them to depend on, but yeah. I mean, what you think, Sean? Me. For what reason? Because I'm the man. You the magic man. I'm just a man. I'm the man, period. I'm <laughs> him, bro. I keep telling you I that know, shit. I know, I know. I'm him, bro. I'm him, yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah. No, but if if, if you're going to go to war, bro, yeah. take a nigga like me. Yeah. You're going to go to war. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Take me, bro. I like that. Chances are better. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let's talk real quick. Let's 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 again. Let's. I just want to go back to AH real quick. Um, when you meet him uh, through Vernon, and and things start to flow the way that they were flowing, what was it about AH that made you say he's the he's the guy? I never had a person talk to me like he did. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. With that type of authority, mm -hmm. respect. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I mean, honor and all that, bro. It was, it was there. I mean, yeah. our, our relationship was different. Yeah. You feel me? Um, and I can say that because, and it don't make, I think I was special. <laughs> I think I was special, bro. Magic is special. So. No, no, I, I think I, I think Al have a, <laughs> yeah. a different rapport, relationship, whatever, but he see me a little different, bro. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, I was a, and I'm, I praise Al for being able to deal with so many personalities. Yeah. It takes a real <laughs> smart man yeah. to deal with so many personalities. And we're fighters. Mm -hmm. So you got to tip your hat. Can yeah. you imagine dealing with five, six of me? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's tough, bro. <laughs> that's tough in itself. So you got to give a man that has that type of coolness and, you know, togetherness about itself. But mm -hmm. we used to, we talked all the time. And I know he loved me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't make all the right decisions. Yeah. We never do. Yeah. But I, you know, uh, I'll never, you know, forget what he taught me, mm -hmm. showed me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, bro, every fight I ever had, yeah. every fight I ever had, bro, if you want to see Al Heyman, yeah. he's sitting two <laughs> rows in the back, picture to the right, right there. <laughs> I don't care what a fight was at. He came, bruh, to yeah. support me. Yeah. So I know I was special to Al. Because yeah, yeah, Al don't yeah. leave his house unless he going to Cleveland to see his mama. 
<laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So with that being said, bro, I just want to say, look, man, I love Al, bro. The yes, things sir. he taught me. Yes, sir. And that's why. I feel as if I'm in, I'm ready now. Yeah. You feel me? Because yeah. everything is timing. Everything comes full circle. Sure, sure, sure. I was going to ask you, I know when my dad, he, the things he's taught me, they come up religiously every day, especially like when in a, in a, in a, in a business setting, you know, things of that nature are the things that, I, that AH has done for you, with you, taught you, showed you that just kind of, they show up. He's like he's like one of those guys. Like he gonna advise you, but he gonna let you make your decision. Yeah, and respect you for it. Yeah, you see what I mean. But yeah. he gonna show you, tell you the other play, the mm -hmm. other side. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean. And and that's all you can expect for someone to be one hundred and real with you. Yeah. But yeah, that my team is still out there today, running the game, and I'm proud to say that. You yeah. feel me? That's clean. So to see Sam out there, yeah, to see boys, yeah, 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 and to see yeah. that they still got on lock, but yeah. Uh, I just hate to see it's so much inner bickering between the PVC fighters. I see a lot, a lot of times they don't really support each other. Mm -hmm. It seems like they hate on each other more than anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and I just don't think that it needs to be like that, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because we, when we started, me and Vernon, it wasn't like that. Yeah. It was about unity, love, and we were together, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think that in a way, in a lot of ways changed. If, if I could change anything, I think, you know, try to, you know, uh, even though we all individuals, yeah. but, you know, we can have something, you all can have something special yeah. under this umbrella if we all pull together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, say, for instance, your daddy in, in, in working with other fighters, mm -hmm. you feel me? Mm -hmm. Could even be somebody that might not be in your weight class, but just from another camp. Mm -hmm. But if he's helping this guy mm -hmm. become a better fighter, yeah. What's the big deal? You gotta support it. You know, what's the big deal? Yeah. You know, so that it. just support each other, bro. And I think they'll go a long way, yeah. much further. And yeah. that energy, that energy I've been talking about, bro, I'm telling you, it's real. Yeah. It's real, Sean. 100. And, and, and I want that energy to once again flow yeah. through the boxing world, bro. Yeah. Flow through the bro boxing world from the commentating standpoint from the trainer, from whenever, from yeah. wherever. Yeah. That energy need to be felt. Mm -hmm. And I think when I look at when I look at the culture of boxing, I think the whole game is on a weird frequency right now. Hmm. A weird frequency, mm -hmm. bruh. And you know, and I think, you know, a little bit of the right energy, everybody tapping in, yeah. I think I can see the shit really take off. Yeah. Really, man, and uh, I may, I don't know everything, but I know a lot about boxing. And I just want to help, bro, because mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. I can help these guys. Mm -hmm. I can help these guys for real. I, I can't turn that. back the hands of time. Yeah, I wish I could. <laughs> you feel me? Don't we all? But from now on, moving forward, you can. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. can be the fighter you want to be. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You got to know what you're missing, though. Yeah. Find out what it is you're missing and go get that. Yeah. It ain't what you got. It's what you're missing. Yeah. And, and I'm, I already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to just ask it anyway. And you're going to annoy me with the answer, but it is what it is. He, you're going to be Sean Porter now? Uh, uh, <laughs> you, you can teach any style in boxing? I can, yeah. The winning style. The winning style. It ain't but one style. The winning style. <laughs> because I never had a style, Sean. Uh-huh. You can't have a style. I will back you up. You on gotta that. be able to. I'm gonna co-sign that. Change your style. I'm gonna co-sign that because when I was watching fights of yours and stuff like that, I'm like, how do you describe Magic Man? Magic Man just he got the left hand, but I do what it takes, and he can box. Yeah, and it's it like takes. you know, like there wasn't anything that was like, um, like you're. You weren't wow until the wow happened. You know what I mean? Right, right. It was. Just, uh, does that make sense to you? Like it's like you don't see nothing going on. Yeah, until, I'm like, I'm until like, you see it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it, if you're like me, like I'm rewinding. I'm like, okay, what was he? What was he seeing? What? Okay, and I'm watching the feed and all that kind of stuff. You just, I got a cosign. You just got it. You just had it. You just have it. You I know was what a mean? thinker, thinker in that ring, man. Yeah. I was a plotter. I was a poker player, cunning. 
unpredictable, and those are all the things I wanted to do. And you was comfortable doing that. Though. I was comfortable. Yeah. I was comfortable in my skin because I was confident in my ability. My dad, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. My dad, so, so, so it's a couple, so one of the things that we would do, my dad would train, I so I had a multitude of styles as well, and my dad would train specifically to whatever he wanted to see on this day. So some days it was just nothing but the jab. Some days it was we working just on defense, other days it was this, other days it was that. And the days that he would want me to counter punch and I would lead off first, he stopped the whole sparring session. I thought I told you to counter. I am. No, you're not countering. You just threw a jab. I told you to counter. You got to be comfortable. You got to stay right here. When the punch comes, you can't flinch. You got to catch boom, it. Boom. You got to counter yeah, it. Be in his I'm rhythm. Like, All right, cool, dad. But my rhythm depends upon me leading off. I get comfortable when rhythm. I lead off. And then my reflexes come to I can catch and counter off of that. And so it was things like that 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 helped build every little piece that you of need. what I had. Yep. How did you build the Magic Man? How did the Magic Man get built? It was a long time, bro, in the process. Yeah. I start, see, this people don't understand. I was boxing at 10 years old. Yeah. They think I started late. I didn't start late. I started early. Yeah. From 10 to 14, I proved to be one of the best fighters in Florida at a young age. Yeah. You feel me? But from 14 to 18, yeah. I was out of boxing. Mm hmm because my mom moved 50 mm -hmm. miles on the other side of town. Mm -hmm. So boxing was removed from me. Mm -hmm. Bad as I wanted to do it, I couldn't. So I got involved in other sports. Yeah. But when I graduated out of high school and, and, and no scholarships and all that shit, I'm tripping. I got a son, a, a young son. His birthday, January 24th. So you yeah. know, that was the summer of, of 88. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going through a lot, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm, at, the, I'm at the worst. Of yeah, the worst, yeah, yeah. and I see this vision, yeah. and I just, I, I just saw that, bro, and I didn't, I didn't let that change over the time of. I'm gonna put this into perspective, and I'm gonna just look at you, and if I'm wrong, you correct me. I'm gonna put this into perspective, and then we gonna do our motivation, and then we gonna get out of here. Okay. You fought ten to fourteen, right? Right. Didn't fight from fourteen till twenty. About at night, I started training again about 19. 19. I started back training. And you did the Pan American Games, the Olympic Games, World Championships, just one World Championship tournament? Oh, yeah. No, I had two. I lost to Jack, Jack Lord Jacob in my first world title in world title championship in Finland. Okay. But he was a he was a silver medalist. He lost to uh he lost to Ramon Garbe in the finals of that tournament. And I fought Ramon Garbe. Yeah. In a USA Cuba duel oh, wow. in Mississippi. Wow. But Ramon Garbe was the top of the the, yeah. the ladder at for that the, time yeah, for yeah. Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I yeah. fought him in a contested fight. Yeah. They gave it to him. Yeah. And that was the first time I felt the effects of body punching. <laughs> first time in my life. Yeah. In Biloxi, in Biloxi, he was a, he was a pro and amateur. He was an amateur. Yeah, yeah. My, he was an amateur going to my body. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm cool. I, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm tearing off on him on, yeah. on his head. Yeah, bro. Set, after the second round, my head, I need help getting up. Dang, like, just took your legs took away. Took my legs away. Yeah. I couldn't move, and he he was able to win. Were you still were you still sharp? Oh, up I top, was the man, but you bro. just couldn't. You was like a he little getting more, a lethargic. He had more. International experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a dog, bro. Yeah. Ramon Garbe was a dog. Bro. But I want to put this into perspective and I want to respect you and honor you right now because when you get to that point of being, and you said, like you sitting on your couch, you already know what you've been in. Y'all should know his story. Y'all should know what he's been going through. And he turns on the TV and you see Roy Jones and you say, you know what? I'm going to win that gold, that gold medal. And on top of that, to avenge a man that eventually you would fight, but at that point there was no malice there. It's just I'm going to get what he what he didn't get because y'all stole it from me. Inspiration, USA. Inspiration, but when you go to the bro. Olympic Games, you fight against guys that been fighting since they was eight years old, right. never took any time yep, off, yep. and learning and growing, fighting against other greats and making them better. You're going against those guys and you beating those guys. I want everybody to respect who you are Thank you, my as God. a fighter and what you For did sure. as a fighter. I understand what it takes. You fighting at the Olympic trials, you what, four, four to, four to four, six five. fights? Yeah, yeah. Through the whole week? The best of the best. Against the best of the best that never took any time off. Right, right. It's hard, bro. It's, it's, it's You know what I mean? 
And then you turn pro and there's so much you had to fight through. You didn't have a deal and you didn't have this and you didn't have... So many times for you to go back to what you was going exactly, through. Bro. So many times for you to just say, I quit Fuck because yeah. they're not giving it. They exactly. Not, I'm supposed to. I seen Roy. You know? And you never stopped. I want to use this as motivational now. We in our motivational segment now. That I want people, number one, to respect who you are and what you've done because you're unique. Thank you, my man. I you're, appreciate like, it. Like there's something magical yeah. going on with you. I believe you. that too. Go to the Patreon. I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I'm now I'm just telling y'all to go to the Patreon so that y'all can see this man's story. It, it's on other YouTube stuff like that. You type in Antonio Tarver. See the greatest story never, never told. told. Yes, sir. Because it truly is. You Thank know what you I mean? Sure. Like I didn't know everything until I started to read and and watch and dissect and things like that because I had to. Mm -hmm. I've had um a pleasure. Thank you. Learning more about you, I've had a pleasure, of course, having you um, and being in your presence this weekend. Um, but I want you to use so. So let me do this again. Just as a fighter, it's very hard for most of us to take time away from this and come back to it and become everything that he became. I'm not saying this; it can't be done. It's just hard. This it's is a unique case, and if you don't believe me, try to find other cases like this. You won't find right. them. Yep. This man's unique. This man's magical. I, lo I love that for you. Mm -hmm. I know I know where you get the name from, but you there's something about you, and I really, really appreciate that. Um, with that being said, I want you guys to respect this man. Understand, it don't matter if he talk too loud. don't matter if he talk too fast. don't matter if all, all, all he wants to do is <laughs> talk about him. Everything, come back to him. It's coming from a good place. And, and, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from it's coming from a great place. Thank you. From a great man with the greatest story never told. I want you to use your story real quick to kind of motivate those um out there. Um by the way, I've had people that tell me they only watch the show at the end of the show so that they can watch the motivation. Okay. And that's big for me. It's bigger for me that to affect people in a positive way than it is for people to catch up on how Sean Porter thought that fight went. I am a, I am in the business of affecting lives in a positive way. I'm in the business of motivating people and making people better. Right. And I always use the end of the show as motivation so that I can do that. You've been through a lot. Um, just without going into the story, talk about the adversities of coming past what you went through and how you didn't look back. Well, man, you know, it was a tough time in the 80s, bro. Late 80s, you know, it... it I think when you look at how they affected our neighborhoods, yeah. how they tore all the neighborhoods down with you know the drugs and everything, bro, it's like um, you had to be lucky mm. not to be to have been affected by that. Mm. You know, it was a to, terrible to time. Not have been affected by terrible that. time, yeah. bro. Terrible time. And um, you know, I'm only human. Yeah. You know, and for one. You know, a period in my life, bro, I made a bad, I made a bad decision, a bad choice, and I paid for it. Yeah. But even when I look back at that, bro, I say, you know what, man? How many years? How many years? I abused drugs about two years after I graduated. So about two years, and then how long until the recovery? Uh, I went in the program. Within those two years, it was a six month program. Six month program. And uh, when I went, when I came home out of that program, bro, I had told everybody what I was, where I was going, and what I was gonna do. It ain't never over. And it never ne changed my it mind. Never it ain't never changed. You know, it's it never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. But you got to make up your mind, though. Sure. sure you see? Sure. I had made up my mind, Sean. Sure. Bro, I had to get it done. Yeah. You know, from where I came from, bro, Ivy Lane. Yeah. It ain't no success stories, bro. Yeah. And that's just what it is. Mm. And, you know, when I look back at everything, I mean, I worked hard, bro. I mean, I, I got more to do, yeah. you feel me? But I do want to be recognized, bro, because, mm -hmm. hey, man, I, I think with my experiences, bro, mm -hmm. I can be a, an asset to these yeah. guys. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My trainer, Jimmy Williams, bro, was one of the greats, and I think that was my, the secret to my success. Mm -hmm. He never gave up on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He never gave up on me. He always saw me mm -hmm. for the fighter I said I was. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, if I had it all over to do again, man, I, I would do it over again, bro, because it was worth it. Wow. It was worth it, bro. Yeah. It was worth it, bro. Because everywhere I go today, bro, they say champ. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's a good feeling, bro. Yeah. And they remember the good times. Yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, I just wish I would have hit that social media era. Yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We could have ran it up. I know. Because when you I see know. these guys out here, and I had to do a lot of things yeah, to, to get, get Roy yeah, Jones yeah, yeah, in the yeah, ring. Yeah, 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 yeah. And because, you know, hey, you uh, that, was respect. that was respect, though. Yeah, you would have been a menace, when though. When you look at it, that was respect, bro. Yeah, sure, sure. But that was a different time. Fighters, was, and I ain't saying they ain't got no real fighters out there today. Uh -huh. I, I, they do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, they got to find themselves, The road's too. a little bit rough. They got to find easier. themselves, too. Yeah, yeah. But I love what guys like T.O. and, 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 and uh, Crawford, they represent the game good. Yeah. You know, uh, Charlo, uh, you know, in your way. We, yeah. got, we got some young crops out there, young yeah. fighters. Yeah. But for motivation, bro, set goals. Make your, set goals and don't let nobody change your mind about your goals and what you want to become. But people ask me what it took. It took everything. Yeah. It took everything. Yeah. And, you know, it still takes some. Yeah. So don't be afraid to, to just go for it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, get some po get some people to believe in you too. Yeah, because you need support sometimes. We this get tired, we get hurt, we sure. get sick. Sure, you feel me? And sometimes we need somebody support. there for us mm -hmm. to support us, mm -hmm. to believe in our dream. Mm -hmm. You know, Jimmy Williams believed in my dream. Buddy McGirt believed in my dream. Dudley Pierce believed in my dream. Yeah. Al Heyman believed in my dream. Yeah, Sam Watson. All these guys believed in my dream, bro. Yeah, yeah. and they was able to assist me in getting there. Yeah. Because yeah. I couldn't have done it by myself. Yeah. But it was my visions in my head that I couldn't let go. Mm -hmm. I had to become champion. Mm -hmm. And I had to go through a great, all-time great fighter to do it. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, yeah. I think me and Roy Jones could have been the best of friends. Yeah. Because we, right here from Florida, you feel me? We did it in Tampa, and it couldn't be no me without him. Very true. Very true. So when you look at how our lives has paralleled mm -hmm. since 13 years old, mm -hmm. it's the greatest story never told. Yes, sir. Because we got to talk about the baddest entertainer, fighter, yeah. promoter the world has seen yeah. when it came to Roy Jones Jr. Yeah, 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 yeah. That man did things in the rain that was never seen before. Mm -mm. You know? But this is boxing. Yeah. It's always going to be the next. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. Yes, sir. So don't get in your feelings when that next get on that stand. It's just his time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Respect that. Mm -hmm. Because he earned it. Mm -hmm. It did nobody give it to him. Yeah. How can you fault me? Yeah. Nobody gave me nothing. In fact, I had to break doors down. Yeah. But imagine if I would have had that machine behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. Anybody, they can sell water to a camel. They can sell anything if you put it in people's face long enough. <laughs> yeah. That's what social media has shown us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just who they feel like they want to really yeah. exalt. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Listen, we're going to get up out of here, but um, in closing from the Magic Man and Showtime, set goals. Don't be afraid to, to to go for those goals. The goals never go anywhere. You do. You either go forward and you keep going That's with it. You them. said something there. It, it, you keep the forward and you keep change. going with them, or you fall off and you and you go and you digress. We ain't about digression. We about pro progression. Um, and also, it ain't never too late. Never too late, bro. I did it at twenty seven. Yeah. But it, you know, I believed. Yeah. You gotta have a wild imagination. Yeah. Cause I had a crazy imagination, bro. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So when you set goals, set them high. Yes, sir. Set them high. Just yes, believe sir. it's meant for you. All right. Now I got to do this again. All right. So set goals and set them high. Okay? And go for them. But don't forget. How how I say that? Uh, they don't move forward. <laughs> they move back. <laughs> the goals don't go nowhere. You do. <laughs> the goals don't go nowhere. You do. You either go forward or you go backwards. We're going forward. And we're not stopping. It ain't never too late. This is the port away. God bless. <laughs>